continue. Okay, I've put in my license key, and now I'm going to go ahead and click I accept. I'm not going to send any usage data to Microsoft, because this is going to be a pretty standard install, so I'm going to click on Next. And you can see we have the SQL feature installation, SQL Server po Power Pivot for SharePoint, and any features with defaults. Now, I'm not going to install all features because I'm going to do what they call the least service practice, which is installing only things I need. And it's a pretty common practice with most systems administrators. And you should definitely look up the practice and the actual reason for the practice. Um, the main reason is to keep less surface area for your attackers to actually hit. So, we're going to go ahead and click on SQL Server Feature Installation. Now, this might not show up for you in Standard or Express, but it's definitely an Enterprise. So, we'll click on Next. Now, it's asking me what features do I want to install. I'm actually going to go install Database Engine Services, because that's the main thing we need to install. SQL Server Replication, because I am actually have a Express Server replicating from this. And I'm going to do Full Text Search. Analysis Services reporting services business intelligent development studio and the reason why I'm installing this is because I want to take advantage of this reporting services I'm not using a different business intelligence studio for maybe let's say another SQL server to report on this this is actually my main SQL server that I'm doing a lot of reporting on so I'm going to go ahead and install that client tools connectivity this is for if you have other computers in your network such as my other express server that I'm going to be replicating from in order to be able to connect to it I'm going to go and install the SQL servers books online it's a great reference tool you should definitely install this every time I'm going to go install the management tools definitely because this is how we're going to manage our SQL server and these last two I don't need. I don't need the client connectivity SDK because I'm not going to be developing anything in .NET. And I don't need the sync framework because I don't need it in this particular case. So we're going to go and click on Next. Now notice it runs another check. It's going to run many checks throughout the install here, and it's actually a very good thing. One of the checks it's going to run, and it's going to be one of the first things on the list, is the SQL Server 2005 Express Tools. Prior, I hate to pick on Microsoft here, but when they first released 2008, not 2008 or 2, 2008, they forgot to check the fact that 2005 Express Tools were installed. And if you installed 2008 Express Tools, when the 2005 Express Tools were installed, it actually corrupted your entire SQL Server not a good thing. So afterwards we have the operating system supported for this edition making sure that Windows Server 2003 is okay which it is. Previous release of Microsoft Visual Studio making sure that we don't have any and if we do that it's not going to conflict. We go down further everything here is not applicable because I don't have any SharePoint installed. and 64-bit operating system it's not applicable either. Then it's going to check the SQL Server 2008 R2 shared components upgrade and I don't have any shared components that I'm going to actually be upgrading here, so it should be fine. Update setup media language compatibility. It's just making sure that if you do have to install any other medias, that it's going to be okay to install. 2008 IA64 check, making sure that it is compatible with the 64-bit processing. So we're going to click on Next. Now, if you install multiple SQL, SQL servers it's on one box, it's known as calling it's known as called instances. Now, because this is the first instance that I'm installing of SQL Server on this machine, it's going to be called the default instance. However, I can choose to name the instance and install the default instance later. However, that's not a common practice throughout most DBAs. Most DBAs will go and install the first instance as the default instance and leaving actually the MSSQL server as the instance ID. Now, it is a default instance and you can change the default instance ID now in 2008 R2, but I don't recommend you do that. It's a pretty common practice just to leave that MSSQL server right where it is, and that's it. Now, you can change versus the program files install where all the install for SQL Server to run is installed, and the actual SQL Server instance install where the actual files needed to run the instance is installed. 
and this could be like on a separate partition maybe you have a raid 5 setup that's very little for your OS and programs but then you have a another raid 5 cluster that's actually huge and it's all for your data and you probably want to change your instance root directory to be in that raid array rather than the old the small raid array so we're going to go ahead and click on next since I only have one partition and one drive on this machine It's going to do then the disk space requirements and making sure that you have enough room to install. Definitely have enough room on this drive. So we're going to go and click on next. After this, you're going to notice that we have the different service accounts that we're going to have to assign. Now notice that we did do a domain account here and we're going to go ahead and put on the domains uh, users here. So we're going to go ahead and type in the domain. I can either do two things. I can type it in. Or I can actually hit the drop down and do a browse for it. Notice I have an entire directory here. And this is for the SQL database engine. So that's just my SQL user. Notice how it finds it and fills it in there for me. Then I have the SQL analysis user. So I'll just simply go ahead and do that. That's a lot easier than typing it all out. Which one's this for? This is for SQL report, so SQL report. And I didn't create a full text one, so I'm just going to uh, connect it to the actual SQL database engine one, so SQL user. And I'll just leave this bottom one alone. And the reason why this bottom one is uh, I'm leaving alone is because I actually have to create another one in a different forest because of the fact that. I have my forest is only 2003 compatible and I'm going to have to actually import and map a different thing. So normally if you have a 2000 forest you would be able to go and put that in here and I'm going to leave it disabled because we can always change it later in the services panel because it is a service after all. So I'm going to go and make sure I type in the password here correctly on each one of these. Excuse my horrible typing today. Okay, and I'm going to click on next. Beautiful. Now, you have two modes that you can install SQL Server in. You have a Windows authentication mode, which is also known as Windows Pass Through, which basically SQL Server doesn't do any authentication itself. It actually goes ahead and passes it through to the Windows domain or the local system and says, hey, is this account available? And if it is, here's the Windows username and password. Go and verify that's correct for me. And all you're doing is attaching it to the SQL Server saying that, hey, this user can get access to this, this, and this. And it now, the, but the actual authentication is actually done at the server level, the domain controller, or the local system. So in my case, I'm actually going to install the mix mode option, which gives me the, both the ability to do the Windows pass through, as well as using the SA account, as you can see where it says specify the password for the SQL Server Administrator, which is SA account. And this allows me to go ahead and have a easy way of getting into my SQL Server without actually going ahead and creating multiple different Windows accounts. I can just use SQL accounts and then you have the SQL cows and all that and the licensing. You're going to want to definitely do research on that. Um, and you know many people different say that they want to do Windows mode or mix mode. They argue which one's better. Uh, in this demonstration I'm doing mix mode for a reason because my application after this is going to actually require for the um, mix mode to be enabled and so what we're going to do here down here you can actually specify the SQL Server administrators because maybe you don't want all the domain admins to be an administrator maybe you only want this administrator or you or specified other users which you can click on add they also have added this cool little feature where you can say add current user who's currently logged in which is a handy feature if you logged in with your own account to install so as you can see I'm the administrator 